Ready to go with some 65cc action. Man, has that been in your pocket all day? Nice and warm and squishy. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, it's uh, as the gate drops, we'll have a Kawasaki dinner, all Kawasaki riders dinner at the Lucas Oil Arena in 20 minutes. That's 5.30. Jeremy McGrath, Adam C. and Cirulo, and Ryan Villapoto will be there to answer your questions. So see you there at 5.30. Daxton Bennick, been aces so far this week, and he just nailed another Bell Helmets whole shot, 65-7-11. Well, there you go. Bennick does it in the uh, opportunity that she was hoping to see happen with uh, maybe Deegan out front early on and Bennick trying to chase him down. Not necessarily the case as we uh, open things up here. As I saw, I believe, the 28 of Preston Bolswag out of Battleground, Washington, who finished sixth in moto number one on the bent lever motorsports machine, opening up in an early second place position. We'll see whether or not he's able to hang on to that and position Jock in is taking place all through this 65cc class right now. Now through the story land, our leader continues to roll there. The uh, seven of Dax to Bennick and uh, Bennick again uh, still out front, but there is your, is that second place or is that, the, is that the 28 or the 38? I couldn't quite catch the number on that one. There's your leader though, coming around now toward the uh, Sweeper turn, getting the big air there, and man, a fresh racetrack. These guys are looking at similar racetrack to what they saw this morning. They were the first moto that was out on the racetrack today. They had a freshly uh, groomed track at that particular point as well. Now, there are a lot more, uh, I think, of the areas that they left out there than what there was this morning, but still, man, these, these guys have been very lucky to be able to receive that kind of treatment. Uh, even though they're two different classes, it's the same riders, basically. So Bell Helmets whole shot award winner now rolling around trying to maintain that lead and I believe there is the 38 machine that we're starting to see now peek his head up and around. Hayden Deegan out of Temecula, California, KTM Orange Brigade rider now moving into a third place position as he looks to be reeling in the 28 of Preston Blows Plug. Let's see what the official results are. That's exactly it. Hayden Deegan less than a second behind. They're both about seven seconds behind your leader as they head down in front of the billboard. Here comes Deegan now as he tries to steal the deal real quick as he wants to put himself in a quick position to try and track down. And there he goes around. Blows flog now. A little bit of a miscue there as he goes into one of those deeper ruts. He'll lose a little bit of time. Hayden Deegan, though, is on the hammer as they head through the Belt Moto hole shot for us now. And he's trying to track down that uh, Daxton Bennett. So now Carter Malcolm in the number four spot. Colin Allen opens up in fifth. Noah Viney is sixth. Christian Janik, the 27 machine, is seventh. Landon Peppard in the eighth spot. James Clough, ninth aboard the 15. And Jerry, Jeremy Fapani rounds out your top ten. It's Parker Ross in fifth. Mark Phineas is, is uh, 12th. Uh, Hollis, it's 11th for Parker Ross on the number five. Mark Phineas is 12th on the 11. Holland Russell is 13th. Thor Powell in 14th. Brandon Shaw in 15th. Luke Fowler in 16th. Tyler Cole 17th. Kate Johnson 18th. Dominic Hegman in 19th. And Enzo Timmerman back to the number 20 spot. We saw Enzo earlier this morning start out in a top 20 as well and found himself crawling through the pack and losing time, gaining time, losing time. And we'll see if he's able to pull some things off here this time as we roll through lap number two and we see that the 67 of Carter Malcolm now trying to lay chase to the 28 of Preston Bowles plug now as they work their way back toward the front section out of Storyland now toward that big Rocky Mountain 8 TBMC sweeper turn, big sandy sweeper, still got a well, good flow to that as it uh, looks like more moguls than it does a uh, sweeper turn now, but it will develop uh, even more as these 65s continue through the second moto. Working on lap number two to come to a close as our leaders now in the uh, section right here in front of the announcer's tower, and it is darkening up even more. That storm system might be moving in a little quicker than we thought. Daxton Bennett. He might be the storm that's rolling right now, or is the storm rolling behind him in the form of the 38 of Hayden Deegan? Lap times right now reflect a 220.3, nearly a seven second gap at the end of the first lap behind Daxton Bennett. Now we see a 5.2 second gap as Hayden Deegan turned a 218.6, nearly two seconds faster than Daxton Bennett that last time around. You do the math like that, 
two, two and a half laps. We're going to see these guys going head to head and wheel to wheel. Preston Blowsflog, Carter Malcolm, Colin Allen still going at it. Looks like Malcolm is all over the backside of the 28 of Blows plug, Bowls plug now as uh, that gap has dropped to just 1.9 seconds between those two. Watching Daxton Bennick on RacerTV.com through the Comedic Bowl turn there, heading into the GoPro 10 Commandments now. And here comes Deegan. Deegan, I believe, has closed up a little more than two seconds. you got to remember, he had to make the pass on Bulls Plug also before, so that might be a reason why maybe there was only a two and a half or a second and a half or so faster. Maybe he might be a little faster this time around. He's certainly got the hammer down right now trying to make that happen, so we'll see. Again, it was 5.2 seconds by theory. Two and a half laps, those guys should be wheel to wheel, and Maybe Deegan trying to get around, but we're going to see if that doesn't maybe happen a little quicker than that. Daxton Bennett, though, picking the pace up himself, getting some good air out of that back section of Storyland into the sweeper turn once again. And there is Deegan. Can't tell at this moment. If, but man, I tell you, as hard as he's charged, look at the lines he's choosing right there. Uh, to the outside went Dominic or uh, Daxton Bennett. Sorry about that. Deegan kind of threaded that through the center part of that track, maybe cutting the track a little bit shorter and cut, closing up a little bit faster. Deegan taking that outside line after the sand, looking, looking like Blake Baggett riding those outside lines just right up against the track barriers, trying to make a charge up towards Daxton Bink, <laughs> Bennett. But he, Daxton Bennett this morning in our opening moto, he was very, very good. I watched oh, him on yeah. the track, even going down and still winning that moto. So for Hayden Deegan to be out there right now, both of them at a 216. Hayden Deegan a little bit quicker that time around at 216.5. Wow. And but that's that's pretty amazing. You take a take a think about it. Daxton Bennett went 220 that first that that second time around or the first time around. And now he's picked up pace right there with Hayden Deegan, so we're not really seeing a lot of this gap start to close up. And I'm with you. I'm pretty impressed with that number seven machine. Some of those big bikes, big bike riders in like a 250C, which is our entry level big bike class, are only running really down in like the 210, 209 range tops. So these guys right now, only about six seconds off a of big bike pace. That's pretty crazy. 65s is completely crazy. So Bulls Plug still in the number three spot. All righty, just got the word from the MX Sports Racetrack office. We do have some weather coming in. Uh, we do a, advise that uh, you take advantage of this time that we have right now, take cover, and uh, for the most part, batten down the hatches. We got some high winds coming, yeah. so if you've got canopies and things like that, if you've got a canopy, if you've got something loose, make sure you got it uh, either put away or tied down so that it won't blow away. We have the possibility of some high winds coming with the storm that looks like it's on its way this way as well. So, again, bear with us and uh, prepare is the best yeah. thing to do really, at this point. Like you were saying, the big things, take those canopies down, maybe take down the canopies that are hanging off the side of your motorhome. Also, if you're down in the creek playing around, Looks like there might be a little bit of lightning and thunder in this storm, so please stay out of the water if you see lightning in the air. Do not be in the creek while that is going on. But if you are getting ready for a moto, because we still got more motos left today, maybe you might want to start stacking some tear-offs on, maybe swap over some roll-offs, because we are still going to finish this racing up today unless it turns completely terrible. Well, Georgia, the race forecaster, says it's not going to rain. Georgia, and, you know, women are always right. Uh, they are, aren't they? Always. I'm not going to argue that fact, especially with a woman standing around right they, now. <laughs> exactly. 5.9 seconds. Check it out. Bennett just dropped to a 2.14. Did you? And then also Hayden do dropping to a 2.15. But, wow, two seconds. Did you watch Bennett wheeling through that straightaway, picking his front wheel over bumps? Like, these guys on 65s are riding like seasoned pros. Amazing. On the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. It's insane how good these kids are. You know, they've got a lot of experience. You look at a lot of these kids starting down here at the ranch at around five or six years old. And after 
six years, half their life, they've been racing basically here at Loretta Lens in the 5, and 10, and 11-year-old range that we're looking at right now. A lot of these riders have been racing here for more than half their life, so they are, I guess you could say, seasoned veterans at this. Just a highly competitive racing all the way through their lives. You know, they, these kids start racing here when they're four or five years old. And to cr it's crazy to think that a, a kid like Hayden Deegan, being 11 years old, this is probably his fifth time at Loretta's. Right. And it, it's just, it blows me away. I didn't even go to Loretta's five times, <laughs> you know, when I, was, when I was an amateur. I didn't start going until I was, uh, I think, 14 years old. So, man, these kids have so much experience, and it's just, it's no wonder why they, don't, they, they do so well hopping straight into the pro ranks like they do manufacturers doing such a good job of grooming these young riders to turn professional someday. Preston Bulls plug back of the number three spot, the 28 machine, about 15.4 seconds back. It's come under fire from a couple of different riders, Colin Allen being one in particular, the 35 machines, James Klo, not far off the pace either as the 15 is uh, knocking on the door. And you see those three riders coming through the Sweeper turn now. We see Carter Malcolm back of the number six spot. Jeremy Fapani now up from 10th to 7th place. Landon Peppard is 8th. Brandon Shaw 9th. Noah Viney now rounding out your top 10. Our Enzo Timmerman report up from 20th to 15th now. All right. Making some progress through the pack. You know what? I always used to say, and I actually it wasn't, I, I'm not going to coin this phrase. It was actually Mark Pellegrino, Kyle, Kyle Regal's stepfather, used to always tell me, Jimmy, it's all about the ride. He never cared where the, end or where the start was or the end result was on paper. It was just all about how you ride. So great charge through the pack all the way up to 15th place. Wow, and speaking of charges, now Bulls plug under pressure from Colin Allen as what looked to be a little bit of a comfort zone out there for the 28 machine all of a sudden it is not, and he got the pass on him. So Colin Allen now moving into the number three spot as they come from behind the billboard section, but the 28 of Bulls Plug is not, re, not relinquishing that position so easily as they head toward the Red Bull Arch now. Hard left-hand turn up toward that uh, straightaway now toward the Cometic Gaskets Bowl turn. It's getting kind of interesting back there for third place. Husqvarna versus KTM. Bulls plug got him back. Look at this as they roll into the Ten Commandments. Now here comes Colin Allen again. Back there watching it all unfold is James Klo, the 15 machine, the number five position rider. As we head into Storyland now, underneath the Honda banner. And what kind of stories will we have to tell after this one? You know, sometimes this uh, section of the racetrack has been probably one of the most, like we say, storied part of the racetracks, and that's not why it's called Storyland, but it certainly is ironic how so many things happen in that back section of the racetrack. There's your leader, da Daxton Bennick, into the front section now as he crosses over oh. the uh, Camelback and now into the big Thor Beach sweeper. That gap still about four and a half seconds over Hayden Deegan, but Deegan's still head down and charging right now as he wants to take away the position. I really haven't seen a 60 rider, a 65 rider that impresses me the way that Daxton Bennett does since kids like Jesse Nelson. I can remember Jesse Nelson was one of those kids on a 65 that was just mind-blowing fast. And that when I watch Daxton Bennett, right, it reminds me a lot of those days watching Jesse Nelson grow up racing that 65 because it was almost like they're just a miniature version of a professional top racer. The things he's doing on that 65, scrubbing it, leaning over in corners, almost dragging the bars through some of these rushes, laying it down. Oh, Daxton now we're back to battling for that third place position again. Jimmy Albertson as Bulls plug under pressure again from Colin Allen, passed here by the billboard. Oh, once more. They nearly come together there at the very end of the board, but I think that one might have sealed the deal for the 35 of Allen. I think he might have been able to secure that third place position now. We'll see if it's going to be uh, as much of a challenge for him to hold on to it this time as we roll through the short shoots and now once again back toward that uh, 10 commandment section of the racetrack. 
watching Deegan on RacerTV.com. He has now shaved that gap down to three and a half seconds. Bennick dropped to a 216.8. So uh, we see a 215.7, so a second, 1.1 oh. seconds. Deegan was able to gain on him there. And as we get into lap traffic, that could bode well in his favor. That tractor berm cutout they have in the back coming out of Storyland, Hayden Deegan, as you guys just saw on Racer TV, just had that thing laid over wide open in the outside of that berm. He's really trying to make a charge here at the end. I know there's not much time left, but I think Hayden Deegan is trying to make a statement. Oh, and we got back Bennett Daxton. Daxton Bennett is down. Sorry, folks. This is a huge change of events. Hayden Deegan will take over the lead now. That just goes to show you never give up, kids. Anything can happen, even towards the end of the race. I'm going to pick my head out and see. I believe we will have a two-lap card coming out the next time around. So we're so, approaching 16 minutes into this moto, so we are late into this race now. So couldn't have happened at a better time, I don't think, for Hayden Deegan to be able to receive the easy ride to the front. Now, I know he would have much rather have earned that one, but honestly, he did earn that one riding that hard. Those riders had amassed a 26-second gap over third place. Pretty amazing stuff. Now, Hayden Deegan, we know we were talking a lot about Dax and Bennett out front putting in a dominating performance, but Hayden Deegan was there the whole entire time, and there was only a couple laps where he couldn't match Bennett's pace, and that's where that gap was starting to spread out. But Hayden Deegan keeping things in check and ready right away to capitalize on Dax and Bennett's mistake. And now he is out front leading this thing with only about a lap and a half to go. And now Hayden Deegan getting all the TV time he can handle. Another fun kid to watch ride around on a 65. Obviously son of Brian Deegan, multiple X Games champion gold medalist also a supercross race winner so this and, kid and has hayden is probably one of the most famous 65 cc riders right now if you follow social media in any there are videos danger boy is certainly a uh, a very followed individual a lot of folks know exactly Check out who this, this berm kid is. real quick right here right this berm on racer tv just ripping into it on the 65 I believe he did a backflip not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> this kid's nuts. And he can race <laughs> as well. Man, oh. did you see him stretch that out, man? He got some distance off that jump coming out of that Storyland section. Well, as they say, the apple does not fall far from the tree. And Hayden Deegan, I, th I believe Brian, his father, has some championships here at the ranch as well. So just a full motorsports family, a younger brother as well, into dirt bikes. So the Deegan family making their stake here at the end of the day on Wednesday in the 65 7-11 class. So we'll see a white flag this next time around for Hayden Deegan as he makes his way here through another lap in the history of Loretta Lenz. Will he write a big story that will be told for years to come? I can almost venture to say that that is probably likely. I expect big stories out of Daxton Bennett. I don't think that this battle is over yet between these. I think this is only the beginning of something big. We're going to see all the way through the professional ranks between these I two. I completely agree. There is still going to be let's see, three motos left after this one. They're going to have another moto or another two motos in uh, what class would that have been? The other limited class, and then they got one more left in this one. So it is far from over between Hayden Deegan and Daxton Bennett, and we still haven't seen that head-to-head -head battling that we're all, I know we're all waiting to see, and it will happen by the end of the week, I guarantee it. Oh yeah, when they hook up, everybody's gonna be around the fence to watch that. Check this out, back in third, Bulls Plug has gotten back in the number three position, Colin Allen running in fourth again, as James Close still holding on to that number five spot, Carter Malcolm is sixth, Parker Ross, we're looking to check in on the number seven spot. Jeremy Frapani up to the number eight spot. As we had told you, Landon Pepper ninth. Brandon Shaw in tenth. Luke Fowler is eleventh. Noah Viney in twelfth. Dominic Hegman is in thirteenth. Logan Best fourteenth. Mark Phineas in fifteenth. Enzo Timmerman sixteenth. Ashton Ewell in seventeenth. Ryder Gwen eighteenth. Ryder Thompson nineteenth. Kate Johnson 
rounding out the top 20. So we'll be seeing, I believe we may see the white flag out now. Yes, we do. The white flag is out. So Hayden Deegan on his way to one more to go. Tough break for one rider. We see pushing his bike off the track there. I think that's a 16 machine quite possibly. Colton Truly, man, Truly's had a, a, a not the best of motos, it doesn't appear there, as uh, we kind of expect it to be him. Possibly one of these riders that could be up there battling with uh, some of these other riders after watching him work through the ranks. We'll see if he can regain position as your leader now makes his way into the home stretch as Hayden Deegan on his way to check her flag and a Moto 2 win as he ties it up here at Loretta Lynn's after this second Moto. Hayden Deegan is now 2-1. Daxton Bennick, if he can hold on to this, will check in about 10 seconds from now with a 1-2 score heading into Moto 3. Hayden Deegan just revving that bike when he crossed the finish line in celebration. Brian, if you can hear me down there, tell your son, let's wait until the third motor to start revving that bike and blowing it up. <laughs> I don't want to add any extra work onto Brian's plate. He doesn't need to be having to do a top end in between the second and third moto. But congratulations, Hayden Deegan. What a stellar ride to stay in there. Keep it close with Daxton Bennett, and that way he capitalized on that mistake. Well, Bulls flug or flug. Uh, Preston there in the third place position. I am as impressed with him as well as he stood the test of the, uh, the battle that came to him. Hey, he comes from Battleground, Washington. He must be used to it. Elko, Minnesota, fourth place positions. James Clow there. Colin Allen in fifth out of Hazlett, Texas. Carter Malcolm and Elizabeth Colorado will be sixth. Parker Ross up to seventh aboard the number five. Uh, Jeremy Fapani back to eighth out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Landon Peppard ninth out of Wasilla, Arkansas, or Kansas, or Alaska, Alaska. That's what I was trying to get out. <laughs> it does be given. I said Arkansas. Well, hey, AR is Arkansas. It, I, I doubt it with how good that result was that he's still living in Alaska at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, not. He's probably a GPF, a Georgia kid, or a Southern Florida, something like that. All right, there you go. Well, there he is. Look at that, man. That kid's smiling real big. As we get set to head down to the Race Tech podium for the Race Tech post-race interview, we have Kevin Kelly standing by down there. Yeah, Hayden Dean's first to the uh, finish line, first guy to the podium. He's waiting on me. Folks, let's hear it. Put together for the number 38, uh, Hayden Deegan. How about it? Come here, Hayden. Get back here behind your dirt bike, my man. Put that around your neck. Your gold medal, it is yours. You're tied up. We got one, two moto scores going into that third and final moto. Take me through that last moto. I know you were trying like crazy to get up there and pass Daxton. Yeah, I bogged pretty bad out of the start. I'm like, oh, not again. And I just uh, gave it um, all the berries and got up to second behind Dax. And uh, without the two laps, um, when the two lap board came out, he crashed right before that. And I'm like, I needed that bad because if I would have got second, I would have had a um, less chance. And I got in the first, and I was like, yes. And I got um, over the finish, and I was so pumped. You are pumped. You're all tied up. What are we going to do this next moto? Hopefully get a good start and go and check out. I like your plan here, buddy. Who do you want to thank? All these here for you. Who would you like to thank? Uh, KTM Orange Brigade, Team Dunlop, uh, Power Band, 100%, Thor, uh, 395 Productions. And everybody else, thank you so much. He gave it to Barry's, ladies and gentlemen. The number 38 of Hayden Deegan is your winner. Nice work, Hayden. That's why we keep racing all the way to the checker flag. Hayden, I'm going to slip in behind you here, and we're going to grab this Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award. We're going to welcome up our second-place finisher and the Whole Shot Award. Come on up here, Daxton Bennett. Where are you at over there, number seven, Dax Bennett? Probably getting a dip of skull, getting ready to go for the podium. Come on up here, man. The Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award goes to Daxton Bennett. There you go. Let's handle that one first here. Come on over here. Let's get in the center here, right in front of the bike here. Let's hear it for the whole shot and second place finisher, Daxton Bennett. I'm going to do that next. Thank you. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna give that to the folks at Bell Helmets, or we'll let it slide right here. There we go. Now I'm gonna hand you this one here. I know you'd rather have the one that's gold in color, but this one's just gonna have to do. Second place finisher, put it around your neck, Daxton. The race was going your way up until I guess that white flag lap. Take me through what happened. Uh, you know, I just I had it, but I cut under a lap rider, and there was like it was a slick spot up the roller, and I just kind of slid out. And then, well, you know what? We're all tied up. This is a one moto winner take all affair. Are you up for the challenge coming up in a couple days? Yes, sir. Who do you want to thank, Dax? Uh, Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. KTM Arms Brigade, uh, Dunlop, Alpine Star, FMF, Mom, my dad, uh, everyone else I forgot. Thank you. Hey, congratulations. One more time, let's hear it for our second place finisher, Daxton Benick. Real quick, getting a little couple shot. Hayden Deacon, get up there with your buddy there. First and second place, a KTM sweep, in fact. Now we're going to welcome up our third place finisher. Come on up here, Preston Baseflu. Come on up, Preston Baseflu, our third place finisher. Preston Baseflu had to battle like crazy with Colin Allen the entire race. Preston, come on up here, you tall son of a gun. Put that around your neck. The bronze medal is yours. Talk to me about that race. You had to battle the entire race. I was watching that one as much as I was the one up front. Colin Allen and you guys were slugging it out. Yeah, it was pretty tiring. Oh, I bet it is. Now, what are you going to do to try to chill out and relax? Are you just going to go hang out in the creek or what? Yeah, just go in the motorhome, shower, and hang out. Call it a night and just kind of chill out. Hey, anybody you want to thank for helping you out here? I know a lot of folks helping you get uh, to the th number three spot. Yeah, my mom, my dad, 100%, Golden Tire, Lynx, Flow, Fusion, ODI, Mom, Dad, Devin Harriman, Live Purple, Bent Lever, Recluse, Power Band, Dirt Bandit, and I think that's all. You think that all? What about that lady right there? She was like, hey. That's my grandma. There we go. That's his grandma. How about it for Preston? Bass flu. He finishes up third. He battled the entire race. A great group of kids coming your way out of this 65-7-11 class. That's it. From the podium, we'll toss it back up to Rodney and Jimmy Albertson.